Hello and welcome to Profiles in Risk. This is your host, Tony Canyas, and today I have with me John Morlin, founder at Smarter Risk. John, how's it going today? Fantastic. I'm, I'm really happy to be on. I, I love the show. Awesome. Th thank you so so much. Uh, if, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, basically shortly after you announced the, 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 the company, I messaged you asking you to, to come on the show, uh, at least shortly after, after I saw it on, 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 uh, on, on the insurance nerds, uh, ecosystem basically. Oh yeah. On the Slack channel. On the Slack channel. Exactly. Great. I am awful at, at marketing the Slack channel. So, so I should do that real quick, uh, for, for the listeners. Uh, basically the largest neutral community online and free uh, for insure tech and insurance people. Anybody can join at insurance slack.com. Uh, so check it out. It is a great community of people who are, who are often doing some pretty cool stuff with, with, with it within the industry. So thank you. Thank you for let, letting me get, get the, uh, the shout out. Uh, so that broke. Yes. And I'll, I'll give it another me. plug. It's very cool because you have so many insurance professionals on there and we can chat amongst ourselves and, you know, talk about things and, and ask for us. So our opinions or feedback, which has been really fantastic. So after some technical difficulties, we're, we're, we're back uh, on technical difficulties on, on my side. Uh, so, so, uh, John, uh, thank you for, for joining me today. We were talking about, about the insurance nurse community and, and the Slack channel. You were saying how, how it's a great community. Uh, so, so thank you. Th thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, so today, uh, we're, we're here, uh, to talk about, about smarter risk. Uh, so, so, uh, we always give the guests the, the chance to give the elevator pitch. What is smarter risk? So smarter risk is a self-serve software platform that automates the assessment uh, reporting and development of risk control and safety programs for the express purpose that business owners uh, can qualify for their best rates and insurance companies can extend their best prices. Okay. Okay. We, we tried to make something that's really, really difficult for business owners and make it easy. So wh why, wh why is it? uh so 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 difficult for for uh for business owners well you know we in risk management i've been in risk control for almost 20 years now we use a whole bunch of different standards iso nfpa we use osha fm ul and the list goes on and so it gets it gets really confusing it's uh gets very time consuming and if they try to hire someone to do some of those these functions for them it gets very expensive so we wanted to build an application that uh, that fixed all that basically. Okay, 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 okay. Um, what 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 kind of companies are 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 are, are you uh, are are you targeting? What 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 kind of industries would benefit so, from this? So yeah, we're we're focused on the small to mid sized companies. So uh, small mid market. Uh, primarily focused on businesses that require manual labor. So think about anyone who makes things, move things, or sells things. So uh, just a couple examples, warehousing, machine shops, metal workers, woodworkers, hotels, restaurants, those types, Main Street type businesses. Okay, and it makes sense. Anything that uses uh, blue collar workers is, is likely to have uh, higher workers' compensation premiums uh, since, since they're at higher risk than, than, than you know, uh, the white collar workforce. That... That's right. Yeah. And our, our assessment tool doesn't stop at workers comp. It also covers property, liability, and small fleet. So it's pretty comprehensive. It takes using our self-assessment tool. And, and this is what we found when we did beta testers. It takes less than 15 minutes to assess the risk. Yeah. Oh, wow. it, it's, it's really fast. It's uh, it's, it's pretty smart. Okay, and 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 you described it as, as as an app a couple of times. So yeah. is, is that its its main access point is literally an app on my phone kind of thing? Yeah, well, it's an it's a desktop app right now. It's okay. in a web browser, but we did build it, and I don't want to get too crazy here, but as a PWA progressive web app, so it basically functions as an app on your phone when you access the website. So it has very similar functionality to it to if you would have actually installed the the application like through an app store. So okay, okay. So and, like we, a, and we may do an app at some point, but we wanted to build it so that if 
someone didn't have to necessarily put an application on their phone. If they just accessed it from whatever device, it would orient for that particular device. Okay. So that's how we built it. Perfect, per per perfect. And and uh, so based on your LinkedIn, it, it looks like you've been working on, on, on this for about a year and a half. Um, well, that's that's the short version. Yes, <laughs> I actually had the idea about ten years ago. I tried uh -huh. to put put together a team, um, and really, I hadn't figured out how to make it all work. So, about eight years passed. I meet um, <clears throat> a fellow, one of our developers, actually now, and said, "Hey, I've got this idea that I've tried to put together before, and it's been nagging me. No one's built this thing. I really think it could be done." Uh, I just need a little more time to figure out how to make it work. And I need someone from a programmatic standpoint that can can make it function. And so we worked together for about two years and we built the beta. And that was, Jan we, we got the beta up and running January of last year. And then we spent a few months beta testing. And then I put together a team in April and we rebuilt the app from the ground up because we just learned a lot. And um, we also learned a lot from the beta testers, and so we rebuilt the app, and it took us about nine months to do that. So, okay, and it it, it makes sense how ten years ago this would have been a lot harder. Um, oh yeah, it it really ha we we've seen a, a radical change. I, I I'm a weird combination where I I I went to school for computer science, ended up graduating with management information systems, uh, but I've never worked on the IT side. Uh, so, so I know just enough to be dangerous, and and one of the th things that that is incredibly different uh, for, from when I got my degree about 15 years ago, it, it, it is back then you you want you wanted to get something off off the ground you for you needed a server basically right, mm -hmm. uh, and, and and now everything can be hosted on the on the cloud completely di di different different game. Yeah, yeah, it's very different. And, um, you know, I'm not the technical guy. So I, I have two developers uh, that, I that I work with, and uh, they, they do all the technical stuff. I say, hey, I want it to do this, and then they make it do that. So the most I can do is WordPress, a little HTML, and I've tinkered with Python. But yeah, it, coding is not for me. Okay. <laughs> not for, but I respect what they do, because it's hard, you know. Okay. So one thing that I, that I find really, really, really interesting is your a tagline on LinkedIn right now uh, for zero dollars? Our software will show businesses how to improve their insurable risk. So, yeah. if if you're not charging the business, what what's the business model? Okay, so um, so the tagline there, if you if you see on our our logo, is assess, improve, share. So the assess part, now that's our what we call our self assessment tool. That's the app that will assess your risk. That's free. So we built that free for business users with a single location. So there are some caveats to that, right? If you have 20 locations, the free, free version is not going to work for you. But if you have one single location, you're a small business owner, you simply want to assess your risk, you'll get recommendations, actionable insights, and you'll get a risk score. We do that for free. We don't charge anything for that. And the reason we, we did that was we really wanted to focus on the customer, the small business user, right? We wanted to help them. Um, the improved part is where we have, with our model, we have a subscription product where we can automate the development of those safety and risk control programs. So instead of spending, you know, months in meetings trying to develop a bloodborne patch program and a lockout tagout program and a respiratory protection program, you can simply click a button, answer a few additional questions uh, because we have the risk profile once you've filled out the assessment and it will generate the policies, custom policies for you. It will build them for you in minutes. So that's the subscription part, and that's $50 a month for, for small businesses. Uh, that also allows them to do multi-location assessments, um, and it also gives them access to a forms library. And the, the cool thing about what we did with our forms library is, in most cases, safety and risk management is very confusing to the average business owner. They go on Google, they find a safety site, and there's 500 options, and it all might as well be written in Greek, right? They don't even understand what half of them are. So with our forms library, we created a filtered view. So if it's a if it's a hazard that they have, and there's a policy that's required, there are um, forms that are associated with that. So they can look at it from a filtered view and just see the forms that are applicable to them and their business. So we tried to make it so it was really, really, really easy. So okay, so so. 
but me not coming from from the safety business uh it it what it, what it sounds to me and correct me if i'm wrong but what what it, what it sounds to me is 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 like a uh what's the word i, I was going to say out of the box customized safety program uh customized for your industry but but uh there, there's a word with with uh i can't think of the of, of the word uh it uses key as a metaphor uh okay let's just stay out of the box so so ba basically it's, it sounds like like what it, what it's building for 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 each company is a custom solution custom basically. So, so solution based on the information you, you you gave us and and you get that ready to use basically and and, and in, yeah. in, in a way that's easy to read for for not having a safety department that's right and and so i worked um with companies for years and most of the small mid-sized businesses they don't have safety people on staff they don't have risk managers on staff a lot of times they'll say oh you know bob in hr or sue that's a mid-level manager Hey, you're doing safety now. That's that's kind of how that works, and um, it's been a real struggle for them because they they don't understand the standards, and the person that is in charge of those departments may not have any experience in safety or risk management. So, and and you know, I noticed this when I, I worked for ISO for five years, uh, insurance service office under their risk decision services um, division RDS, and we did risk control consulting for carriers, and so I would go out and visit with. A small business and then when i would leave i'd tell them they need 20 different policies that they didn't have in place and they were like oh i you know i make widgets i don't know how to write a bloodborne paths in policy so i even had occasions where uh you know some of the insurers would ask me hey can you i'll pay you will you write them for me and i'm like no that's the part of our service is not what we do i just tell you what's wrong you know i don't actually fix it for you um, so, so a lot of times they were really, really frustrated with that answer. And I think as an industry, when it comes to risk control, we've probably done a poor job of delivering those services and not totally our fault. I mean, it's the way risk control is done now is it's not scalable, right? So if you said, and I've talked to different underwriters at different carriers, and there's all these crazy estimations, maybe 10% of the book of business, or maybe 50% of the book of business actually get the benefits of risk control. They actually get a visit or a phone call with someone that can help them in this department. But there's just not enough bodies. And if we tried to get 100%, the cost would just be astronomical. It'd be very, very expensive. So I think there's a place in the market for a service like ours that can help small business owners with these things they need. Um, that's not time consuming, right? So that's kind of that's kind of where I am. And that's really was the kind of genesis for the whole thing is I could see the frustration with these small business owners. They didn't know what to do. And so they would spend months in meetings. They would go on Google and try to find some template or something, you know, that would work for them. Or they'd have to hire a consultant for 150 bucks an hour. Most of them aren't doing that, right? Especially if you're a mom and pop's machine shop and you, you have 50 employees, right? You're not going to spend... $10,000 hiring a consulting firm. So real, real pain point for them. And, and they, they, they struggle with it too. They get frustrated because they don't really understand how it all works. They don't understand the insurance. They don't understand the risk management or the safety side either. So, you know. Okay. How, uh, what's the, what's the distribution model? Uh, it sounds like, like, like you built a, a, a pretty cool uh, tool for this particular need. How are you getting getting it out into in front of the right people? Um, well, so right now, and there's a couple of different things we can do. One of the things I didn't tell you about, if someone says, hey, look, I'm going to implement all the recommendations that the app has outlined themselves, they can totally do that. Uh, but if they would like a risk, what we call our risk report, which is basically a summary of their risk and all the proactive measures they're taking to control that risk, we charge $10 one-time fee for that. And that allows them not only to get the report, but to update their recommendation status. So let's say, for example, they need that bloodborne pathogen program. They can click a button. It updates the recommendation. It changes the report and the score. So once they've made all their improvements, they could then take that report, send it to their agent or their carrier or both, and they could try to qualify for the best rates possible. So we do, we will charge for that. Um, and we've done a lot of outreach lately with with mainly uh, insurance agencies, because a lot of times insurance agents are really good at risk transfer, right? They're like, oh, hey, you need this policy, you need these endorsements, you need all this stuff. They're great at that.
but most agents I, that I've ever known don't know a lot about risk control. It's a different animal. It's something mm -hmm. that, you know, it's just not in the wheelhouse, right? Um, and, and so I think there's a real opportunity for us to help agents where they struggle with some of this and they're not sure what to tell their, their insured or tell, tell their prospect. They could say, hey, here's a service. If you don't want to pay anything, use the free assessment tool, you know? So I think we could really help agents in that way. And, and so it's kind of symbiotic. It, we can help the agents and agents can help us by referring business. Okay. Per perfect. Make, makes sense. So distributing it through, through the agency channel. Yeah, uh, definitely. Okay. What, what else, uh, uh, as we, as we talked b before we started recording where I, I come from the insurance side, not, not, not the risk side. What else should I be asking you about? Um, well, what else could we talk about? So I, I'll go back a little bit on my background and then we can maybe talk about carriers and agents and how we can help them more directly. Uh, but my background, so I started out with ISLs with them for five years. Uh, doing risk control, another seven years independently on my own. So I've worked with a lot of businesses over the years. And once I did that, I kind of, for me personally, I was 13 years in, I kind of got burnt out at being just a consultant. So I was always telling people what was wrong, but I couldn't help them fix it, right? And so for me, it was theory, right? I wanted to be able to actually help them do it. So I spent the last several years working for different companies and basically rebuilding or building if they didn't have one from scratch their risk management safety program and i had really good results uh one company i saved a little over two million another company i saved a quarter of a million this was about an 80 percent reduction on just in workers comp so i mean risk risk control works if you implement proactive measures you're going to pay less money for insurance why because you're not having claims that's and I used to joke with people all the time about, like, look, I'm lazy. I don't like managing claims because that was part of my, my job responsibilities. So I just don't have them. That's the easiest way. <laughs> you know, what's what's the old saying our, our mom used to say? Like uh, what uh, the ounce of prevention is worth a pound of, what is that old saying? Now I'm going to uh, blank yeah, on it. Yeah, ounce of prevention, uh, it's worth a pound of cure. Yeah, exactly. And so that's what we're trying to sell. Now, we do have a tough sell. We're We're selling vitamins, right? to a degree. Um, but then again, no one wants to write policy, even me. I'm actually decent at it, but um, it's not the most fun I've ever had to sit down and write a bloodborne pathogen policy or a lockout tagout policy, right? So in that respect, it's a painkiller. <laughs> it's definitely a painkiller. I I would have I would have almost over the years paid someone else to write those. Like, you know, so um and I tell you if this software that we built was available, I would have bought it. So as a risk manager, because I would have been like, especially these companies I was working with, they had about 2000 employees. And so they're, they're in that sweet spot for us, that 10, 20, 50 employees up to maybe 2000. Perfect. Now I will say our software is, does have its limitations. Like we're not talking about like HBR, high property risk, like a chemical plant with 5,000 employees. Yeah. They they need a risk manager, a safety manager, and some other software. Not what we're doing. So we're really we really are focused on that small mid sized business. Okay, I, I I've always said uh, to insure techs that that uh, I believe the ones that 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 will be successful are, are the ones that it's not just a, a tech toy looking for an insurance problem to solve. It's uh, an actual insurance person that saw something that that need, they needed improved, and then partnered with a technologist. And it sounds like on the safety side, that's exactly what 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 you did. You saw a, a problem that that you yourself wanted fixed. Uh, yeah, you know, I got frustrated, and this is one of the reasons. After thirteen years old, I decided to make a change. After thirteen years, because I'd done it, and eighty percent of the recommendations were always the same. Oh, hey, have a written safety program. Check your fire extinguishers. All the sprinkler system, you know, it's overdue for service. You know, it was kind of the same things over and over, over again, uh, about 80% of the time. And I kept thinking, why can't we automate a lot of this, you know? Why not? So, and it really, it really should always be, this, my, my thing is, this should be the first thing that we do. But most people, the first thing they do is they buy insurance. They transfer the risk before they ever manage it. This should be the first thing they do. And so we're hoping that we change that. You know, companies right now, if you look at the market, I was looking at some numbers the other day, about $9 billion a year is spent in the insurance industry on risk control. 
and that's shrinking. We're spending less over time. But private business, and these are, I would guess, are mainly medium and, and, and the bigger businesses, they're spending $10 billion a year, and that's growing. So we are seeing a shift where companies are taking more of these proactive measures, and they're taking more of that responsibility on and kind of leading the charge when it comes to risk control and safety, instead of just waiting around going, oh, hey, I've got insurance for that. I literally have had people tell me that. That's when I got scared. I, I would sit down and talk with a business owner and ask them some question. And they'd say, oh, well, that's what I have insurance for. It's like, no, hand on face. No, that's not the right answer. Wrong answer. Let's try that again. <laughs> but, but, you know, that was one of the an, an interesting things. Someone posted something on, on, on LinkedIn the other day. And, you know, it's funny. You've been out of something for a while. I forgot how much I really enjoyed it. But um, this person was an insurance agent. They worked primarily small business, and they were talking about how much they enjoyed visiting the small business and you know, talking to, you know, the, the owners, you know, and they would tell you, owners will tell you everything. I had a, it's funny, I had a meme, I did a talk recently, and I said, when I became a risk control consultant, I thought it was going to be this guy, and it was a guy in like a power suit and a tie. I said, but I ended up this guy, and it was Norm from Cheers. You remember Cheers? Because it's so amazing when you sit down and you talk to business owners, they tell you everything. Like you just sit down. Maybe I have that face. Maybe it was just me. I don't know. But they tell me personal stuff, tell me all kinds of stuff. But they also would tell you their stories about how they built their business, you know, and that that's so interesting to me. Um, and I was always fascinated by that. And I always kind of felt like, gosh, I want to be one of them. Like I want to have my own business and build something I'm really proud of. So um, I know we're getting off on a total tangent here, but. Excellent, excellent. And uh, uh, when, when do, do you think you're going live? Uh, so the, the scheduled date is March 15th. Okay. That is the scheduled date to go live. So, and, and in the beginning, we'll only have uh, the services available for small business owners, for business users, basically. Uh, but then very soon, we will have a service that will include uh, services for insurance carriers, agents, PEOs, and captives. So we're going to expand the or give them the ability to order these risk reports themselves. Okay, so uh, how 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 do you, how do you foresee the the partnering with carriers? Yeah, uh, well, carriers now partner with a lot of risk control vendors, right? There's tons of small risk control vendors out there. Uh, and and so this is done all the time now. So the, the name of the service right now is uh, Smarter Risk Arc Services, Automated Risk Control. Uh, an insurance carrier will be able to go on our site, put in about seven pieces of information, send a link that expires in two business days to their insured. That'll put them into the, the normal workflow of our self-assessment tool, and they will be able to complete their own self-assessment. As soon as that's done, the carrier will get a notification that the risk assessment's complete. They will then continue to get notifications every time the insured improves their risk. So when they click that, we've implemented that recommendation button, the carrier or the agent or whoever's ordered it, the third party will get a notification that the risk is improved. That, that's fantastic. As a former underwriter, uh, <laughs> the, the, that is fantastic. One of the problems with with the way we, we traditionally underwrite is, is that we, Look at it at the beginning and you know, move on. Maybe, maybe at renewal, <laughs> maybe yeah. not. Well, you know, as a risk control consultant for years, I would go and give recommendations. And very rarely did I ever have a carrier come back and say, hey, we want to send you back out there in six months and make sure they implemented all these recommendations. Uh, my understanding is a lot of times they would use the agent. So they would hound the agent, the agent would hound the insured, and then hopefully at some point get back with them. But there's no real system in place. And for us, it's an instant notification. Okay, so, 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 so it can really create a much better communication without wasting the agent's time uh, and, and without human error in between, or at least as many links in the chain. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we, we're trying to really build a, a partnership that really takes into account all these different stakeholders. And we never forgot that at the center is the customer is the business user. 
And, you know, that's all the talk lately is that we've got to focus on the customer. This is a real way in which carriers can focus on their customer. Agents can focus on their customer. Um, and so when we built this out, we tried to take into account all these different players. So there's the insured and then all those that try to service them. Now, they may be with a PEO and we can obviously offer services for the PEO. They may be part of a captive. We can offer ser services to a captive. Um, but most, most small businesses are dealing with an agency and a carrier. And we wanted to make sure the agents had a clear view of what the risk was, and they had the ability to help their insureds when it comes to risk control in a way in which that doesn't work now. I mean, if you look at most uh, or most websites for, for insurance carriers, they may have one page, they may have 50 pages on risk control. But the problem is most business owners aren't going to sit there for three weeks and try to figure out how to become an expert risk control consultant. Just not. Absolutely. We had to make it easy for them. Ma ma makes sense. And it, and it looks very promising. I, I, I like the idea. Uh, thank you for coming on today and, and, and uh, look forward to, to having you back, let's say a year from now, once things are, are fully rolling. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Thanks, Tony.